Hi, this is Jean, and with the holiday season fast approaching, I always start thinking about trees. And I love making improv trees, so that's what I'm going to show you today. This is a wall hanging that Kaylee made, and I think it's really interesting how she created each tree to be a little bit different. Sometimes there's areas that are pieced. Here we have a, a trim on this red tree. Uh, and then her trunks are kind of wide for me. So when I decided I'm gonna do a table runner, I'm gonna make mine a little bit narrower. So you can see what I've done so far. And what I would like to do now is take you over to my cutting board and show you how to make one of these. The first thing you want to do is to decide um, the shape of your tree. And I've made this one more of a rectangle than a square. And I did piece two pieces of fabric together. I'm gonna to be cutting up at an angle. So it doesn't matter to me if these match up. So what I do is put my ruler on and I did mark the center on the green. So I'm putting my ruler up and coming down at an angle. And let's say I look at that and say, oh, I don't like that. I want it skinnier. I could go this way. So I could move this around is what I'm trying to say. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And these don't have to be um, exactly the same on each side. This way it will be, but if I came down and went like that, it would be kind of a funky tree with just a little green top. So we're gonna do this. After I figured out how to make the first one, then I got really brave in making more. <laughs> so now I'm going to work with my background fabric and I have this, um, I found just this simple kind of plaid with green lines on it. And um, I usually have my whole piece of fabric here and I just keep working like this, but I cut this off for the demo so that you can see. And I lay my tree on and I always leave an extra three quarters to an inch at the top. I'm gonna to be taking a quarter inch off when I sew the white and the red together. So I leave a good inch here. And that's wiggle room. Um, in the end, I may end up not needing it, but it's always better to have it. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut that. Just gonna leave this here. I only cut one side at a time. So now I'm going to stitch the white to the tree. And once you start, I like to make sure this is really lined up, and it is. So. I stop and start a couple times. It's gonna get kind of pointy here at the end. And I like using, I call these bunny tails, but it's a, folded piece of fabric. This is a scrap piece of binding. Um, and then I'm not having to lift my presser foot up each time. Now, I need to press this and you can press toward the tree or you can press toward the background. So I'm gonna reach up here and do this pressing. And you can see 
that this background extends past this line. And you can go ahead and trim that off. And what you're going to do now, see this was a piece that I cut out of here. Um, because uh, my fabric happens to be the same on either side, I can flip this over, but you're probably not gonna be able to do that. But I take and turn the fabric so that it is um, the angle when you lay this on here. Then I'm gonna come up this way and I will make a straight edge here for myself for the side of the tree. So you do have a little bit of waste. Now let's get this on here. <clears throat> I'm using the edge of the tree for my line for cutting. And boy, that green got smaller, didn't it? So we're gonna flip this over and pick it up and not pick up that. <laughs> So I will go ahead and stitch this. This fabric is a shirting fabric and it is lighter weight than the other fabric so it looks like there's a little puckering but it presses right out so i'm going to press again pressing away from the tree Now you're going to make the base of the tree and you're, you will want to decide how wide you want the trunk and add a half inch because you're going to take a quarter inch off either side. And then go ahead and add your background fabric to either side. Now I put this together before this was sewn and so I've got a little extra out here. Um, you might want to uh, wait to do this until your tree is finished. So I'm going to find the middle of the tree here. And I'm going to put a pin in. Then take my um, trunk and center it over that pin. And you can see, I didn't do any trimming at the bottom of that tree. So there are some things sticking out. I will trim them off after I sew this seam, but I'm gonna sew the seam following this edge on the trunk piece of fabric. I do like to tidy up a little bit at this point, so I am going to just trim that off. And I will press this now. And uh, it's easier to press toward the trunk, I have found. You know, because when you're, if you press toward the tree, you've got these things, these angles and more. But you could do it either way. It's kind of up to you. Since it's just laying that way, I'm gonna press it that way. And I would, um, I haven't got the steam turned on in my iron, but I would have it turned on normally. So here is my tree block, and I can go ahead and trim it up on each side here. OK, 
Okay, so there you go. There's your little improvisational tree. And I find these are really fun to do. And I, I'm going to show you what I did on one of the other trees. It's this one. See how there's this green band that is on either side of the red? I kind of like this fabric because it had writing on it. So this one is going to go up here. So it's a double tree. And I happen to have a striped fabric, which I thought looked really good. So instead of sewing the background to the tree first, I sewed the striped fabric. But it's the same process. So now I would take and sew this striped fabric. I think I'll do that right now. Then I'll show you what you do next. Do not cut anything off at this point. Be sure you press first because there's an angle here. And so now I put the ruler on. So I would go through this same process with these two sides and put them on. I'll just lay it right here. And so you would have a two level tree. I thought it was kind of cute tree. So I decided to do one too. And I want to show you something else. <laughs> um, I'm putting together um, three trees for a pot holder. So I thought I could use this to show you how you have to figure out what height you want these trees when you have multiple trees. And you can see if I want my pot holder to be this big, I don't have enough fabric here. So you add another piece. It's that simple. And then here's the little tree, which I might put the little tree in the middle. I love this little tree. He has to have an even bigger piece here. And you can see how these lines aren't exactly straight. I will have to use my ruler and straighten up those lines to sew the three together. But let's see what happens when I put him in the middle. Oh, I think that's better. So by the time this gets all sewed up, um, I will trim it down and it, it should be about eight by eight inches as a pot holder. And I wanted to show you this one that I finished and I was so proud of it. I just think it's the cutest little hostess gift. And uh, so that's something you could do with this is also make pot holders or you could have a, you, well, I showed you the idea for the table runner. Um, you could make a whole quilt using these trees. So it's just a fun idea and it is addictive. And you'll find yourself going through your stash and looking for even more greens. And you, you don't get so into having the pure green as maybe when you started. You get more creative as you move along. So thank you for watching today.